I have an article doc here that I got from one of my new writers. When I checked for the plagiarism, it was a whooping 70% in plagiarism. Just like you can see, he practically copied online. All these ones you see underlined are all copied online. Now I reached out to him and told him that his article was plagiarized and his response was it's not supposed to be so. Reason being that he used a free plagiarism checker online to check before he sent to me. In a very clear term, plagiarism checkers that are free online are not the best to use and they will never give you the right result because they are free. Now if you are new to writing and you don't know what plagiarism is, plagiarism simply means taking somebody else's write-up or idea either with their consent or without their consent and you want to use it as if it's yours that's plagiarism so either you're writing an article or you want to write a book or you want to write a thesis or you want to write a short read or a script whatever it is you're writing if you pick directly for somebody else's book that's no longer yours that's plagiarism anyway to let us be on the same page i want you to go to 247 cashdollars.com and there you will see how you can get a paid grammarly pro which is the number one accepted all over the world. It's owned by Google. There you can get for a whopping 70% of the original market price, which on this platform is around five to six dollars. There you can get that. So you will be on the pro level and not use the free version like this new writer did. And that's why most people are rejected either on text broker or on people power, all of these. This is why people are rejected because they don't have the pro. Now today I want to show to you how you can remove plagiarism from a content because i'm thinking you always write content there are always plagiarism in it how can you get a document with plagiarism out of that plagiarism but then i want to tell you if you think why do we even have plagiarism altogether look the whole internet is one big machine if it exists already then it exists if you pick it from anywhere from the internet it's going to show that it already existed since you are also coming onto the same machine I hope that's clear enough. But then you might be asking, what if I print it out and I make it into a book and I sell it in my local area? Of course you can do that. It's still plagiarized anyway, but then nobody can track that because it's now offline. Then I can tell you that it's better you're a human being instead of ripping people off of their own hard work, just create your own. Now, this is a short story. While I just started online writing articles and at that point I was writing as a freelancer, I always feel like, why do anybody care even if their book is plagiarized or if the articles are plagiarized? Most people, especially writers that are new, they don't know the impact of plagiarism on documents. Some people will say, I just have 10% plagiarism. Can I use my article like that? I have 5% plagiarism. Can I use it like that? The answer is a no. Normally, you are not supposed to write repeated words or copied words online for your blogs, books, or articles. It has to be 100% unique. That's why you're a writer anyway. So now, if you want to know the impact plagiarism has on your website or books, let me just tell you. If you write a plagiarist content on your blog, Google is not going to rank it. If it ranks in the early stages, they're going to discover it and then they're going to block you. It's called shadow ban and then you discover that instead of your articles climbing up, they're actually descending. That's what happens when you have plagiarized content. And if you do that on your books as well, it's very easy for Amazon to track you. Amazon will block your book, individual books on the shelf, if it's plagiarized. And then if you keep having that issue in your account, your account may be banned. So that's how bad plagiarism is. But then there are cases where you are thinking, how about if I was the one that wrote this content and I put it on my blog? Maybe I want to use the equivalent part or portion of that on another article in the same blog or maybe on my other blog. Can I do that? The answer is no. You cannot use any article that's already been written on another blog post. We call it self-plagiarism. You can self-plagiarize yourself and the impact is the same. Okay, now to the point of interest. How do I avoid plagiarism? I'm going to tell you four ways. Please listen to me and I will do a live version of how to avoid and how to remove in case you have articles that already have plagiarism. I'll show you everything. The first one is always use translate to translate your words. For example, if you want an article about how to make a girl fall in love with me, instead of researching that in English, research it in German. When you get articles in German, by the time you move it back to English, it would have decomposed of plagiarism in it and reduce it to the barest minimum or even zero. The second way you can also avoid is to paraphrase these articles. For example, you can use quillboat.com to paraphrase your articles and that will naturally remove all the plagiarism that might exist in there because it's going to change the words and use other words 
and then it makes it original. Then most people might say Quibot is expensive. Go to 247cashdollars.com slash shop and you will see there Quibot for cheap. For 50% of what the market value is, you can get it on that place. Number three will work only if it's not online. That's giving credit to whoever is the original writer. You give credit even in your citation. You give credit to the author of whoever had written that offline. That might work, but online it will not work because even if you give credit, it will still be plagiarized. Point number four is after doing everything you know, please always use a plagiarism checker to confirm that your article, your blog post, your document, your book is not plagiarized. And in case after doing all sorts, you still have plagiarism, let me show you how you can remove it in a minute. So I'm going to use this particular article as an example. And as you can see here, when I check on the Pro Grammarly, which you can use on Microsoft Word, by the way, I'm going to leave this particular tutorial in the description below, how you can attach your Grammarly to Microsoft Word directly so you can use it this way. And as you can see here, it's 4%, 4% here. Now you can see the arrows linking down. If I click on this arrow, it takes me to the part that is plagiarized. That's the whole essence of these. And then I just do that. Now you can see it move there and then it's showing me the area that is plagiarized. What I usually do, my practice to remove this is, I'm going to copy the last sentence that is plagiarized. For example, I just don't copy this where it's underlined. You know, this is the only part underlined, but I copy the whole sentence that is underlined. You see that? And then I copy to the next one and complete that sentence. If you don't complete the sentence, by the time you use the strategy I'm going to show to you, which is two strategies, you will see that it will scatter the whole thing and it might not make sense again. Okay, so what I do is I right click and change that to red, like I mark it red so I will know because I usually want to work, uh, you know, separately. So I can go again and click the arrow and then it shows me the next part that is plagiarized. By the way, I'm not going to employ that writer. That's uh, not a good thing to do. Okay, now that this is done, I can toggle off my plagiarism just like that. And then I come back to this. Two ways you can do this. First one is you can go to quillboat.com and use quillboat.com. But I'm showing you two because... There are some articles, maybe like recipes or bullet points articles. You can't use Quillboat for them. It's going to really scatter them. You can only use Quillboat for the ones that are clear. This is what I mean by Quillboat. Quillboat.com. And then I have the premium. Like I said, you can get the premium for cheap for like $5 on 247 cashdollars.com. So you can see here we have standard fluency, formal, simple, creative, expand, and shorting. Normally, you should use fluency. Now, if you use fluency and it does not decompose it, like change it, from plagiarism, then you can step up and use something like formal or creative. But now I still leave it on fluency. So you can see, I can read it again and see if it's cool. But then I'm looking at absorption of sugar, sugar absorption. Okay, it has changed that. You can just look at it and see the ones that are like not really changing well. And then you change them. If I click on absorption now, you can see it's giving me some other levels of, uh, you know, words that I can use. If I want to change sugar content in the body, I can do that. But then uh, no need for that. I just copy this one and then I go back to my file. If I click on my file, you see the highlight is still there. All I need to do is copy and paste and boom, that's it. That's gone. And then I scroll up again. Whichever part has this again, I will just do the same thing. And then I, I paste it here. I do paraphrase. Boom, it changes just that same way. That's how you remove plagiarism from words and documents that are words. Long words like this. For more refined, let me see another word for refined. Processed. I can use processed meal. So I just copy that. The more you change your words, the better it is to pull out of uh, to pull out of plagiarism. Okay. Don't worry about the red. I will check it again. It's just because I'm doing copy and pasting. And now for this part of things, let me use this to show you the other part. I told you you can use as well. You go to Google Translate. From here, you just click on that and then I can put whatever I have here. Guess what? I go to translation, click on translations, go to Chinese, scroll down to Chinese traditional or any other language of your choice and these will translate it to it. It will translate to Chinese. You see that? And then this toggle in the middle, which is back and forth, you can swap languages, swap this back to English like that, like I swap in it, okay, and then swap it back again. By the time you do this, whatever you have here would add lost that particular initial meaning and it will still be correct in use of English. I can copy this and then I go back to my document and then I paste it there. And that's it. So from here now, 
what I do next is to confirm if I'm still having plagiarism or not. I toggle in my uh, from 4%. Let's see. You can now see plagiarism free. It's free of plagiarism now. Just those simple things I do. I can confirm again. You can see check in here. And voila. It's free of plagiarism. That's it. Now, you may not even know how to write articles at all. Or this is new to you. And even if you know how to write, you might want to step it up and know how to write like a pro. Check this out here. I'm leaving this tutorial for you. Click on it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.